Bureau in Washington, D.C., investigative journalist Kimberly Dvorak. Uh, Kimberly, you have Barack Obama, the spokesperson for Barack Obama. You have uh, Ashton Carter. You have John Kerry. They all seem to be downplaying reality here. And the reality here is that the paradigm has shifted in the Middle East because Barack Obama has allowed it to shift. Vladimir Putin has moved in there. And now Russia is in control, essentially, of a very strategic portion of the Middle East. Yes, and uh, last night I actually spoke with uh, uh, retired general, um, director of the intelligence agency, um, General Flynn, and he gave me a couple of different scenarios of actually what's really playing out right now. The, one of the most important things he said to keep in, in mind is that Putin all along has actually had red lines himself as to what it would take for him to get involved in the Middle East, unlike the president of this country who decided to let the world know that there was a red line, they crossed it, and we still did nothing. Now, the two red lines that Flynn would um, actually told me that were significant was the fact that it was unacceptable for the Russian regime to allow Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian president, to fall. And his sources and um, people on the ground said that really Assad was really a couple of weeks away from total collapse. And so that's why you had Russia move in. And that was the one of the, the red lines that Putin was watching. The other red line that Putin discussed was the fact that there are a number of Russian fighters that have joined ISIS and that as they are rising up within the ranks, and they're actually in leadership roles with ISIS, ISIL, or Daesh, um, he was worried about that, and he refused to fight these, these soldiers on his own soil. So he thought that they were more of a threat, and that they were now going to fight them, but he would fight them on their territory, not in Russia. Okay, so this points to one of the problems that uh, Barack Obama um, has uh, fallen into, his fixation with trying to get rid of Bashar al-Assad. It's amazing how U.S. presidents don't seem to pay attention to history. And even if he had gotten his wish, and gotten rid of Bashar al-Assad, who would have filled that void? What would have filled that void? And, and so, you know, in a sense, I don't like Vladimir Putin. I'm not making excuses for him, but he's also possibly doing that region a favor by supporting Bashar al-Assad. But, but the bottom line is, Kim, is that he's no hero. Putin is no hero here. Russia is not going in there to kill the barbarians and the terrorists. Russia is going in there because Putin sees an opportunity for this base, this air base, this naval base on the uh, eastern uh, Mediterranean, and he sees a, a military opportunity as well as an economic opportunity, correct? Yeah, absolutely. He, he feels that they have a big role. They actually have been in the region uh, before the United States went in. Of course, they fought in Afghanistan for 14 years, and that actually brought their country to almost near collapse because they were overstretched. Now, if you talk to other, I have other sources that I spoke to on the other side about the Russia component here, and a lot of them are saying, don't really worry about Russia too much because they're actually going to do the dirty work. They're going to go in and get rid of the ISIS terrorists themselves. They'll do it in a much quicker time frame. But they also stated that, you know, um, people are concerned that he may consolidate power throughout the region, but there's also a real fear that Putin will overstretch. I mean, you have to remember he went into the part, he went into Ukraine, he moved uh, 30,000 troops down to Crimea. Presumably, the United States was unaware that they were backing up and moving assets into Syria. That didn't just happen overnight. And there were reports through Lebanon that there were multiple, you know, hundreds and thousands of soldiers moving in through Lebanon, that this never was reported here in the United States, but this was happening over the past month. So this right. isn't something that just last week we all of a sudden found you know, Russia well, in Syria. This, right. is, this has been coming. It's absolutely inconceivable that with satellites and the information technology that we have today, that the Obama administration didn't see this one coming. They were frozen. For some reason, they didn't react, Ken. But I want to look at the big picture and connect the dots here. Um, uh, Bashar al-Assad, for all intents and purposes, is Shia. The Alawites uh, identify with the Shia. 
Iran is Shia. There are elements of Russia now in Iraq who are mingling with the, the Shia who control the government. And in a very important and strategic sense, Russia in that part of the Mediterranean is in a way a nuclear Iran in that part of the Mediterranean too. Yeah. Well, we have to remember, too, that this boils down to a Sunni versus Shia fight, and this will never end until the, there's a victor one way or the other. And on one side, you've got Qad, uh, Saudi Arabia, you've got Qatar, you've got UAE, and you have, on the other side, you have, of course, Iran, you have um, the, you know, Bashar al-Assad, and you have Lebanon that's playing a big role. And then, you know, a lot of people forget about Turkey and Jordan. And right now, Turkey and Jordan have really taken in the brunt of these refugees. We have six million plus refugees. And if, you know, if you, if you ask the refugees and you go to the refugee camps, they're, you know, they're obviously not supporting ISIS. So one has to question the most powerful military in the world, how we cannot go in and get rid of the 30 to 50,000 soldiers that are apparently fighting for ISIS. And we're not able to go in as the greatest military power and do something about it. And, you know, and we're fearful, it seems, of that all of these people in the region are going to ally with the terrorists. But if they were going to ally with ISIS, they would have been fighting for it. Yet they're fleeing their, their countries and they're living in these horrible refugee camps in Jordan and Turkey. And those countries are, you know, bearing the brunt of all of these refugees while Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Israel and Russia and China are saying, no, we, we won't be taking any of these refugees. So there, it's a very complex region, but at the very basis of it, for the very, if you boil it down, it's really about Sunni versus Shia. There will be a winner one day with that, and I think that's kind of what Mr. Trump was talking well, about in his, let's let them fight it out, and there are people that are thinking yeah. that that may but, not be a bad role. Okay, but, Who knows, but